I'm on the left rear jack, the final jack. Mostly the same process, get rid of the ground cable. I sped everything up to eight times speed mostly. Stubborn bolts. Lots of rust, more rust than I expected. I could just cut those bolts away. Get the grinder, zippy cut. But I'd rather take things away apart this way. So I don't have to replace as many bolts. The cap lock nuts, not really meant to be reused. Use them a couple of times and then uh, you should really get new ones. Depends on how critical the application is. This is not a high vibration situation so I could reuse the cap nuts. That is the ABS brains. That's what controls your ABS brakes. So I have to deal with that as part of this installation on the last jack. Like I say, every jack gets a little more complicated because I started on the first one was the easiest place. So I had to pop the bracket off. I have to uh, put the ABS brake brain back on before I can put my jacks on. So I'm kind of setting it all up so I can do that. You see I put a hole in the channel. One of the bolts for the ABS brain goes through there. Now these are, these jacking kits are actually the intention is to weld them to the frame. And there's a whole bunch of reasons why I don't like that idea. Here's one of them is I would have to be, I can't get that bolt in and out once that channel is flipped around. So instead of having the channel the way I have them with the flanges pointing away from the frame, the flanges get welded to the frame and then you bolt directly to the channel and don't bolt to the frame at all. You just weld that flange on the frame and then bolt everything to the channel. And I wouldn't be able to get this bolt in and out for the ABS brain if that channel was welded on. And then I'm also dealing with two different elevations on the surface. I would have to weld down the shim plate. I would have to weld to my frame, body frame, or cut away some of the body frame and weld directly to the chassis frame. I don't like chassis frame welding, it's not a good idea. It's it's just not prudent. So I, I don't agree with the idea of welding these on the frame of the drivetrain. I don't think that's the way to go. It's probably take about the same amount of time whether you're drilling or welding. Then you've got to deal with welding around grease, oil, fuel, and then there's all of the uh, electrical things that could melt. It's just a whole bunch of reasons not to do it. it might be easier, but I don't, I don't think that's the best way to go. Start the heat melting stuff, catching fire. Just not a good way to go. So you may notice I have a new drill chuck on the mag drill, silver. It's a regular drill bit chuck adapter that fits into the chuck of the mag drill. So this meant I could use a longer drill bit 
And so now I don't need to do the process I did on number three jack, where I drilled a little bit, then I bottomed out because the chuck hit my channel. Now I've got lots of clearance. I can drill the hole all the way through. I can drill two of the holes all the way through here. And that has saved me a lot of time that way. I know the drill is a couple of grand, but once you start buying the accessories, eventually you spend more on accessories than you did on the drill. I think the chuck was a couple of hundred bucks. I still got to watch what's on the back side so I don't drill into wires and brake lines, fuel lines. It's really important to get the jacks mounted straight up and down. You don't want them to go left or right. It, any deflection on the cylinder will wear out the seals prematurely, put extra stress on the jacks. You see I take a lot of measurements to make sure I'm perfectly square cylinders will come down perfectly square. These jacks at the back I think end up about one inch lower than the ones at the front because I had to deal with the uh, being underneath the floor. You may have noticed I just used a hammer to loosen the chuck on the drill so if you spin your drill around and you tap it with the hammer it'll loosen the drill bit if you want to get the drill bit really tight in your drill with these what do they call them chuckless drill bits chuckless drills no what is it called tool free chuck is the proper word so you're supposed to be able to put a drill bit in your drill and just tighten it by hand but you never get it tight enough. So I use a hammer to tap it while I have my hand on the trigger, spinning the drill, tap it with the hammer, tap the huck, chuck with the hammer and it'll tighten that a lot more than you can by hand. Keep the drill from spinning. This is a typical type of situation where every time you do it, you get a little better at the situation and then you get it dialed in. The perfect way to approach a situation and you think, next time I have to do it, I'll know how to go about it and you pretty much never have to do it again. Most jobs are like that, doesn't matter what you're building. By the time you're done the job, you found the best way to go about it and you never have to do that job again. I've switched back to the normal mag drill chuck bit. It's a quick change thing, doesn't take any tools.
my holes are done. I'm going to cut out that extra piece up top. Slightly better view on this side than I had with the camera on the other side. So it gives you a better idea of what I'm cutting out. I'm not really preoccupied with the camera. I set it up in what I think is going to catch most of the work, but I don't really touch it afterwards. It's, it's just too much going on. It would take me forever to get through this job if I did perfect shots of everything. As long as I can give people an idea what the process is, people ask questions, I can always do detailed videos. This is a die grinder. It's a spicy tool to use. It's just high RPM, little uh, like a file bit on the end cutting bit. Handy tool. But very spicy to use. It bounces around and jumps around. It's high RPM. I forget the RPM exactly. Everything's looking good. So I can put my brain box back in. all the jack bolts the nuts are all hidden behind in between the frame and the brain box there's just enough room to get my hand in there and get the nuts on and I can't figure out why I'm not getting it square the way I'd like here So I'm reaming out the hole a little bit because it doesn't line up quite the way I'd like. Here I'm reaming out so my socket's going to fit in there as well. I'm taking away a bit of the channel. Can't get my socket on the bolt properly. Notice the bolts have a flange, like the washer's part of the bolt. I want to make room for it. It wasn't an issue on the other side so much. I just 
shaved some of the washer off of the bolt so it fit in there. But on this side, I have to tighten from this side because I can't get my impact wrench on the back side. I can't get my socket on the back side. And here's where I realized I screwed up and I forgot to put my shim plate in there and that's why I was having so much trouble making everything square. So basically I gotta take everything apart again and put it back together. Well, not everything, I can leave the brain box on but I gotta loosen the jack to get my shim plate in behind the jack. That's why I was having so much trouble getting the darn thing square. There we go. It's really giving me a hard time. I want it perfectly straight up and down squared. It just keeps pulling off to the side every time I tighten things down. It's one of the things I don't like about these jacks is the feet. They're designed to hit the ground perfectly square. If the ground is not square, so there's a bit of an angle, the feet aren't designed to bend and follow the ground. I don't really like that part of it. If you'll notice most cranes, the feet of the jacks pivot adjust themselves to the ground level and I don't think these ones do. I haven't had them on yet but looking at the design they don't seem to do that. And there we go. Jack number four. Done.